beta e. Okay? So if rho of e grows exponentially with energy, if this grows like e to the some number times energy, it's clear that beyond some critical temperature, this is going to blow up. Okay? So there is a critical temperature and that is actually, this is actually the Hagedorn temperature. So this is Hagedorn growth of states. So what we know is that if you take uh, even the free theory on S3, what will happen is that the density of states, the gauge invariant operators, um, grows rapidly with energy. And that tells you that as you increase the temperature, there is going to be a critical temperature at which something is going to happen. Okay? For the free theory, we can demonstrate that this transition is actually a first order transition. The order parameter for the transition is actually the Polyakov loop. And you can show that the Polyakov loop is zero at low temperatures. At high temperatures, it's non-zero. So it's a deconfinement transition in the standard sense. Okay? I will sketch some of these things in more detail tomorrow. I'll just finish by drawing uh, just a kind of phase plot. that if you ask, so we can actually, one can do this analysis at weak coupling uh, or at zero coupling um, exactly. And this was originally done by uh, Sunbolt. Actually, it was the idea was introduced by Sunbolt and then it was made precise by, in a paper by, with a large number of authors, Aroni et al. in 2003. And this was done as early as 98. And the upshot of this analysis is that one knows that if one tries to plot, for example, the phase diagram of n equals 4 super yang as a function of temperature or S3 cross S1, uh, at large n, uh, then, and, and on this axis I'm actually going to draw the proof coupling. What we know is that when lambda is infinite, so this is the line of lambda is equals infinity. When lambda equals infinity, there is a temperature, which is the Hawking page temperature, given by 3 over 2 pi, at which there is a first order transition. Away from lambda equals infinity, we expect this Hawking page transition to continue to be first order. There is no reason to expect that anything will change drastically. Okay, the big black hole will remain, will get some corrections, but will not, will not, you know, you won't suddenly get a new saddle point. Uh, also, uh, at infinite roof coupling, where the theory is described by string theory on ADS5 plus S5, there is this interesting feature, which is what we talked about earlier, which is the Hagedorn temperature. And this Hagedorn temperature, its behavior uh, with lambda is that this temperature actually goes like T Hagedon goes like lambda to the one fourth. So this curve sort of approximates that. It's an increasing function of lambda. We don't know what happens in the middle. What we know at lambda equals zero, and I mean, as I said, I'll briefly illustrate this tomorrow, is that lambda equals zero, there is another phase transition, which is first order. That's the phase transition of this free theory. That occurs at a different temperature. I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I think I do have it. Okay, but it's a known temperature. Let me call it P, pH. Okay, I'll call it pH. And this temperature happens to be slightly lower than that. And we don't know what happens in between. Okay, so there are two things that can happen. It is one thing that can happen is that the first order line continues, right? And just uh, there's a smooth interpolation between the first order transition at lambda equals zero and the Hawking page deconfinement transition at lambda equals infinity. Um, there's also another thing that we know. We know that this phase transition at lambda equals zero is a deconfinement transition, okay? Because we know that the Polyakov loop changes across the transition. 
We also know that that transition is driven by the Hagedorn growth of states. Okay, so what we what we um, know is that at lambda equals zero, the deconfinement transition and the Hagedorn transition merge, and so really this Hagedorn line is most likely maybe I could use a different color is most likely doing something like that. Okay, so at Zero proof coupling, the deconfinement and Hagedorn temperatures coincide, and then uh, at finite temperature, there's a first order line that. So that's one possibility, but one doesn't actually know exactly what happens in this. Okay. So that's the situation at um, for n equals four with <coughs> with with, uh, with temperature uh, with finite temperature and uh, at uh, two different values of the truth coupling. Um, the situation actually is a bit better when you study the theory with chemical potentials turned on. So I will again summarize that tomorrow and then maybe summarize a little bit about what happens when you introduce flavors into the theory. That will all be very fast, so most likely I will use slides. <laughs> Yes, that is that that if the line so there are actually two possibilities which are as of yet undetermined uh, and in order to determine which of the two possibilities actually occurs you need to do a two and three loop computation of the free energy of n equals four theory on S three cross S one and that's you know as you might imagine that's a daunting task so nobody has done that. So the other possibility is that, uh, let me just remove this Hagedorn line for the moment. The other possibility is that there is actually a, this single line splits into two. Those are the two possibilities at weak coupling, and one doesn't know which one happens. And these two lines are interesting because this one is a second order line. These are the only two possibilities, by the way. One possibility is that the first order line just extends. The second possibility is that the first order transition splits into two uh, lines. And this one is the first one, is second order. And this one is the third order. And it's a third order gross written transition. So, and then something has to happen at some intermediate temperature. I mean, if this possibility was realized, which, rest reali which just depends on a perturbative computation that nobody has had the uh, you know, desire to do. If this possibility is realized, it suggests one that uh, there is some intermediate intermediate value of the Tuft coupling that something interesting has to happen because we know that an infinite Tuft coupling is only one phase transition. So it's possible that these two lines merge. I don't know. Uh, so I mean, uh, you showed this free energy as a function of all the parameters. So, yeah. I mean, self-consistently, so, I mean, we, for example, in uh, not uh, total coupling unit, uh, so this, uh, and some this Hawking page, uh, this uh, uh, transition, this uh, critical uh, temperature yes. corresponds to this product of loop all the parameters, right? Yes. But uh, <laughs> what's for that uh, uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen? Ah, so, like I said, the, the Hagedorn phase transition it's, it's not really a phase transition because it's an effect that you sit when you sit in this, I don't know what to call it, the superheated phase, you're sitting in the metastable vacuum, which is not the dominating the ensemble. Yeah. So you force yourself to sit there, you will find that that vacuum undergoes, uh, at high temperatures, it undergoes a second order transition. It merges with another saddle point and, okay, okay so... so yeah, in this case, I would, I would say, I mean, physically, I, I would uh, think, uh, understand is that, okay, uh, I mean, if you use this uh, product loop, so this should, uh, should go like this, I mean, for this deconfinement, uh, should, should it go to this uh, open page? Uh, I mean, a physic, physicals, I mean, the physics is self-consistent there. If yeah. it goes that way, then it's not the uh, deconfinement phase transition. Anymore. If it goes which way, sorry? The I mean, if you go to the higher uh, pH, this uh, head term. Yes. 
No, so that, that that's not a deconfinement transition. This is a deconfinement yeah, transition. Yeah, so basically... Yes. So basically, yeah, maybe, okay. So you mean maybe maybe separate, okay. But at least, uh, at least the one goes to this, uh, I mean, for... Yeah, so we, so the, uh, yeah, so I, I shouldn't have brought up the Hagedorn. The only reason I brought it up is that at zero tooth coupling, we know that there is a deconfinement transition. We also know that the deconfinement transition at zero temperature is curiously driven by a Hagedorn growth of states. Okay, so the, the, it's it's like it's the usual it's the thing that you may you may find the same phase diagram at weak and strong coupling, but the reason that you get a, that kind you get a particular kind of phase diagram, I mean the dynamical reason may be different in the two regimes. Okay, so um, the point is that so if they are the if they are the same. In, at both weak and strong coupling, at least you can then say that I can do some, uh, I, can, I can try to determine the phase diagram of the theory at weak coupling and hope that there is no phase transition or non-analyticity as a function of the tuft coupling. These are two different things. If there's a non-analyticity as a function of tuft coupling, then, you, then a phase diagram that you determine at weak coupling may have nothing to do with the phase diagram at strong coupling. But if you make an assumption that there is no non-analytic as a function of lambda, it's not an unreasonable assumption. It's a very strange thing to say that there's a critical value of lambda at which something different should happen. It's not impossible, but it's a, it's kind of seems unlikely. So it's most likely that if you find a kind of phase diagram behavior, a phase diagram at weak coupling, and it looks similar to strong coupling, then it suggests that there's a smooth interpolation. And, and that then is kind of a useful tool in some cases. It becomes a useful tool for large end thermodynamics in ADS CFT because you can now make the theory more complicated. You can introduce, for example, N equals 4 has global symmetries for which you can introduce chemical potentials. You can ask what is the phase diagram of the theory at weak coupling with the chemical potentials. Then you can ask the same question at strong coupling with those chemical potentials. And there you see actually quite remarkable uh, qualitative matching of the phase diagrams between the two sides. So that suggests that this idea of taking large end theories at weak coupling and at strong coupling and deducing gross features may be a useful guideline to proceed. And what do you want to do? Eventually, you want to do something interesting. You want to start putting in quarks. So if you want to start putting in quarks in the fundamental representation in theories that are non-conformal with a gravity duals, it's very hard to do. So the first thing you might want to try, and that's what you know, many people have tried, and we are also trying with some people, is how to introduce fundamental flavors into n equals four theory. And you can use introduce fundamental flavors in an approximation where the number of flavors is small compared to the number of colors. That's a limit that has been uh, analyzed in uh, to enormous, uh, you know, lots of work has been done, hundreds of papers have been written on that. The most interesting question is what happens when the number of flavors and colors are comparable. And, and that's the direction that one wants to go in. And use some of the guidelines that we get from large and thermodynamics at weak coupling to then construct models at strong coupling. Or try to look for physics at strong coupling. Okay, any more questions? If there's not, let's, let's take a speaker.